I'm Christine Cushing and welcome to the Quarantine Kitchen where we make fun, easy recipes that connect us all. Today, we're gonna trash the kitchen. That can only mean one thing. I'm making something Greek and it happens to be both a request and my absolute favorite, like number one dessert. We're making galactoburiko. Don't worry about how to say it. We're gonna start making it and then we're gonna have some fun. So on my pot here, I've got milk going. I happen to use whole milk, so full fat milk. Semolina or cream of wheat going in. Fine cream of wheat. You can get a coarser semolina. I like going fine. And the sugar all going in there. And this baby has basically got to thicken, like we're making a porridge here, right? This part, super, super simple. I'm gonna put in a little pinch of salt again always with anything sweet, the salt is just gonna really balance things out, not, not too much so that you actually taste it. Okay, so in the recipe, which is always below in the description, you click on show more below the video, you're gonna get all the measurements, every little important detail about this. For now, I'm gonna just let it do its thing, that is come to a boil and thicken, and we can get on with the rest of the recipe. So to this custard, this is essentially a baked custard. At once the eggs, or once the uh, custard is thickened, I'm gonna add some eggs. So let's get a head start on those babies, shall we? Shall we try a little one-hander today? Let's have some fun. Three. Four. Pende. Five in Greek. So far, so good. I'm gonna give that a little whisk up. And this will all be ready. It's all part of what I call the mise en place. Well, what anybody in the kitchen calls the mise en place. And then we can talk a little bit about why I love Galactoburico so much. All right. Truth be told, this is probably one of the hardest things to say in Greek. But uh, you, if you can say atento kumpo, as in Yanis atento kumpo, you can say galacto burico. He's for, he plays for the NBA, the Greek freak, if you know him. If you can't say galacto burico, it's almost like you've got a little fur ball in your throat. Gala. That's, the, uh, <laughs> that's what you want to say. That's the sound. You can just call it gala. No problem. All right, so that is good to go, eggs. And I'm gonna keep a clean station here. So essentially this recipe is fairly easy to accomplish, but again, it's all about the little techniques, right? The little things that you need to be concerned about to make it great. So I have on standby here some vanilla and lemon zest. Those are also gonna go in. I don't put the vanilla in. Uh, in the recipe, I call for a whole vanilla bean. This is kind of a in between a bean and an extract, so I'm gonna add it after it comes to a boil. That's good there. I got some melted butter, always sweet, not salted. A little bit of phyllo, which in Greek just means leaf or sheet. And this is where we get to have some fun and trash the place. All right, so I'm gonna need about 16 sheets of phyllo here. I'm gonna organize myself. And this is where you don't really need to sweat it too much. You see that I have a cloth here that I have it wrapped in. I just wanna make sure I have that close by because as you butter these, if you're not fast enough, you wanna wrap them so they don't dry out. So let me show you, how does my phyllo look here? It's not looking bad, actually. So I've got a little brush going, and I'm gonna quickly just drizzle and brush in a very, very simple way. I'm not being too fussy about this, okay? You don't have to worry about it being perfect. But it's important that this phyllo is all brushed between the layers. So this is how I like to do it. I start on the long side, so this is a rectangular pan, and I start and I leave a little bit hanging out like that. 
Okay, now I realize I'm gonna have to do a little shuffle, a little twist, a little Greek dance. So what I'm looking for, what I want to begin with here are eight sheets on the bottom. Okay, so again, we repeat. And don't worry, you see how there's some tears here? That's all gonna mend itself. You're not gonna see any of these tears, so don't feel like the phyllo has to be perfect because it really doesn't. So what I do now is go in the other way. So really, one lengthwise, one here, and I'm gonna keep going around until I have eight sheets of phyllo covering the bottom of this dish. So let's talk about what's so great about this particular recipe. I mean, what isn't great about it? Let's put it that way. This is where you've got that crispy phyllo outer layer. You've got a gorgeous creamy custard. And then you have a little syrup on top. But let's get real with the little. What, what does little mean in the Greek kitchen? It's generally doused in syrup. And I like it to be a lot less sweet. So generally speaking, I make everything less sweet. Okay, so if you ask any Greek person, they'll know about galactobureko. They have either made it, eaten it, of course. And everybody has a different vantage point of how it should be perfect or what, what the perfect galactobureko is. First of all, what thickness do we want the custard to be? That used to be a massive fight in my family. Fight, really, conversation. Everything is a fight, but it's a conversation. It's like, you see how high this particular dish is? It's maybe like a couple of inches. Now, my grandmother used to make this and she would make it like flat like a pancake, super, super thin, and the custard was really, really thin, and that's, way, that's the way my mom and her brother loved it. Me, I'm like, this is a custard pie. I want more custard. I mean, I don't get it. Why should it be so flat? So, you know, this might spark some, let's say, friendly arguments in your family, in your house. But you can make it in a smaller vessel, and it can be higher. You can make it round. I mean, it's so versatile. You don't have to worry about doing exactly what I'm doing here, okay? So, look at this. Already, there's a heavy, heavy salivating, mouth-watering effect for this recipe. That's all I'm going to say. Okay, I'm going to keep doing this. Let's keep our eye now on the custard, because I don't want that to stick, but I also don't want my phyllo to dry out. So I gotta keep my attention. And then I've gotta talk to you. I wanna make sure that you're having a good time enjoying this soon to be phenomenal dish. Let's see what's happening here. Okay. Some thickening is starting to happen. Now it's important to stir this occasionally. In my recipe, I say stir constantly. You don't have to stay on top of it, but you don't need to also walk away. So let's see what's happening at the bottom here. It's looking good. I might just go in with a little whisk just to make sure it's all nice and lump free. That's what we're after. This process here is gonna take between 12 and 15 minutes, depending on how big your pot is over a kind of a medium heat. And then once that's thickened, then I can add my eggs. Only at that point can I add my eggs. Okay, we've got bubbling action happening, these big massive bubbles. Now I know my custard is thickened. I'm gonna turn it right off. And only at this point, do I actually add the vanilla? Because in this form, some of it will evaporate. So I'm just gonna add a little bit of that vanilla there. If you're using a vanilla bean, you can do it at the beginning. I like adding that vanilla there. And then I also add lemon zest to it. You knew. 
that there's going to be some lemon in this, right? It's like my hallmark. And not only is there lemon in the custard, but there's also lemon in the syrup. Okay, that's looking beauty. Okay, so this has to cool just slightly before I can add the eggs, the eggs that I already just whipped really by hand. That's coming off the heat, looks beautiful. Okay, so this has just cooled down for probably five minutes or so. Still hot, but not, you know, right off the fire hot. So I wanna be careful. This part is really critical. Now that I've got my eggs ready, I'm just gonna gently, this is of course off the heat, so I'm just gonna add a little at a time really to temper this mixture so my eggs don't fully cook in here. You gotta break out a little sweat so that you feel good after when you slam three pieces of this. So gently, a little bit at a time. Of course, this is the biggest bowl I could find, but you know. Okay, so tempering just continually to stir. For me, the magic of this recipe is in that contrast between the custard, the phyllo, and that little syrup. I make it probably half as sweet as the average galactoburico that I've had, which just basically means milk pie. So it's like a custard pie. So here, oh yeah, this is looking good. Okay, a little bit more of the eggs going in, all of them. And now I'm gonna just continue that stirring and my phyllo is ready to receive this amazing custard. The last thing that I'm gonna just make sure is good here is that everything is blended and stirred. Okay, that's looking good. My oven, if we haven't mentioned, is preheated. I like to go a little bit higher, 375, so we get a nice golden crust and it doesn't cook for too long. <laughs> this is a workout. Did I tell you we were gonna trash the place? It's definitely a workout. Okay, good texture on that. Can't taste it because it's got raw eggs. Okay, now here, I'm just gonna pour this in and what I've done is I have another three sheets of phyllo. It's very important to brush butter between each layer because that's what's gonna create that beautiful crisp layer between each, right? The butter starts to uh, heat up and then you get a little bit of steam and then it crisps the layers, right? That's what you wanna do. So I have that separate there. This is coming your way. And then you can have your family or friendly arguments about how thick do we want it? How tall should it be? But this is the optimal size for me. And what I like to do is this custard for me is a little bit thinner. Uh, some people like to put cream in it. I personally think it's too rich that way. So I add a liter and a half or six cups of milk. Again, full recipe is gonna be below. Looking good. Okay, ready? Now we wrap this up like a package, just like the layers went in. Okay, until it's covered up. Some of it can dry out a little bit by the time you bring all the other layers in, but don't worry because in the oven, it's all gonna remedy itself, okay? That's why you don't fret too much about phyllo. Wherever I can add a little butter, I do do that, okay? And I'm gonna just seal it with that very, very top layer, making sure that there's ample butter between the layers. And you see that all is forgiven in there. Now the next thing that I do that I think is super critical is cut some slits, just sort of linear here, parallel to the surface, but not all the way through. I don't wanna to cut to the bottom, but what I do wanna do 
is allow that steam to escape so we get the perfect texture on this baby. Last but certainly not least, just a little splash like with your hands of water just to prevent it from drying too much. Okay, I did have a little bit of dryness in my phyllo and sometimes you really don't know until you open the box, right? So you just keep adding the butter, it's all gonna be good. And I like to bake it probably for not even more than a half an hour, but we'll see. 375, it's going in, I'll meet you on the other side. Okay, who's ready to do a little bath in the syrup? All right, so I'm just imminently gonna take the Galacto Burico out. Here's the syrup. It's just been simmering for about 15 minutes. It's a combination of sugar, honey, and of course some lemon juice and a cinnamon stick, which I will remove. And you can see the texture is still pretty light. If I reduce it down, I think it's gonna to get too thick by the time it cools down. So I just wanna cool that until it's still warm, but not super, super hot. And now it's time for the pièce de résistance. Or whatever that is in Greek, because I don't know it. Yeah, 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 look at that. Oh, come on. Now you see what I'm talking about there? That is some kitchen trashing. Look at the beautiful crispy top. Golden puffed custard. At this point, you will be having a salivating effect because I know I am right now. That is looking beautiful. So the key here now is to bring the temperature of these two kind of a little bit more closely together. I wanna to keep some of that crunch on the phyllo, so I wanna cool it down. I don't cool it completely, so probably half an hour. Then I'm gonna pour this still slightly warm syrup over the slightly cooled custard pie and it is gonna be a thing of Beauty, so see you back here in a few. Twenty minutes resting. So now the syrup is still slightly warm. This is warm to the touch, but it's cooled down quite a bit. Let's do a little drizzling, shall we? I like to get it all into the nooks and crannies. You're gonna hear some crackling now soon. So the key is to kind of evenly distribute this syrup. It is gonna be absorbing. This custard is really like a sponge. Now I have to tell you, this quantity of syrup is probably half what people normally use. I'm serious. And I added the lemon, you know that. By now you know the lemon deal. Okay. Ooh. Now it's all about the patience, which I am very low on, I must say. So I'm gonna let this sit until I could comfortably cut it. I could leave it for an hour or two, but that's not gonna happen as you know. So meet you back here in a little bit where we can taste a slice. Okay, enough with the waiting. No Greek dessert is complete without a healthy dose of cinnamon on top. So let's go in with that baby. And now I finally get to taste. See how I still have that crunch? Oh, that baby is good. It's 
Sweet. So that's my level of syrup. You see that? It's not drenched in syrup. There's a little bit there. It's absorbed most of it. You don't need any more syrup, but hey, be my guest. Go ahead and double it up, but it's going to be sweet. I'm just saying. Finally, I get to taste. Yeah, look at that. Oh, come on. Come on. Oh boy, it is a thing of absolute perfection. It's crispy, it's creamy, it's got a little bit of that tang, cinnamon, just sweet enough. Oh, it is, the lemon makes it, I'm telling you. Look at that custard. Oh, you want some, I know it. Now keep in mind, as this sits, because this is going to cool to room temperature, I'm going to put it in the fridge, it's going to get firmer. So that's why I take it out so it's still creamy in the center. This is going to knock your socks off. I just want to reiterate, for the purposes of this video, I started with the custard, then I moved to the phyllo. You're going to follow the directions. You make your custard all the way to the end. As it cools, then you assemble your phyllo, you put it in, put it in the oven, you're done. Everybody's going to be knocking at your door when they can. Maybe not yet. Thank you for joining me on another episode from the Quarantine Kitchen. I hope that you're doing well. This was a request, and I'm glad that you requested it. Please send me your thoughts, thumbs up, share, and I hope everything is well, is good in your kitchen. See ya.